Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the front line with Joe and Joe. Joe Pasillo, as always, joined by Joe Resinello. And once more, dear brothers and sisters, let us go into the breach on the Veritas Catholic Radio Network, 1350 on your AM dial, 103.9 on your FM dial, spreading the truth of the Catholic faith to the New York City metropolitan area. Please be sure to download the app and share it with your friends. We all have access to all of our station's content, not just the front line with Joe and Joe. Keep in mind, we are an EWTN affiliate, so we all have access to all EWN, EWTN's content also. But hey, if you like what Joe and I do, we're all over social media, Rumble X uh facebook youtube until facebook and youtube take us down but we're there right now anyway so if you can like subscribe share do all that fun stuff help us out we go live thursday nights at nine o'clock eastern time where we get into a little bit more trouble than we get here at the, on the veritas catholic radio network um but jim we promise we're, we're going to try not to get you too much trouble um today we're welcoming to the program uh james valoy and we're going to discuss his new book our ladies prophecies God's messages for our time. Now, a couple things. That's available, number one, at Sophia Press. So if you're watching this on social media, you, uh, Joe and I will post all the, the links to buy the book with a discount from Sophia Press. That'll be in the description. We obviously, we always ask that you support our Catholic publishers as well as our authors. Uh, so please do that. If you need to, uh, we'll have Jim tell us where else you could buy the book. If you have to go and buy it from Amazon or Barnes and Noble or, or any of those guys. Okay. But we obviously prefer that you buy it from the publisher and also tell your, tell the owner of your local Catholic bookstore, then maybe they want to order a few copies and put it on the shelves. Um, I bet you it will sell. And, uh, and the other point I was going to make is this. Joe and I talk all the time about a lot of problems in the world. We're Americans, so particularly a lot of problems with America. And we, quite frankly, Joe and I say all the time, I think you know if you regularly listen to us, is that um, our nation, our nation in particular, needs a good dose of Our Lady. All right? And she has... At times in history, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get into it in the conversation with Jim, God has sent her to talk to us, to warn us, perhaps, to encourage us, perhaps, okay? Um, and and some people, you know, really, you know, they put a lot of, a lot of uh, stock in those, in those prophecies and those apparitions. I know Joe and I do, all right? Uh, some people choose to ignore them. Well, maybe you ignore them at your own peril. Maybe we should be listening to Our Lady, all right, uh, and that's what we're going to talk about with Jim Valoy. Just for those of you who do not know, Jim has two adult children. He and he has worked in business and previously in youth ministry, in teaching and administrative roles. He holds a BA in theology from Franciscan University of Steubenville. His articles and book reviews have appeared in the Wanderer newspaper, Soul Magazine, uh, World Apostolate of Fa Fatima USA, and Catholic Life Magazine. He became a revert to the Catholic faith from evangelicalism while a student at Franciscan University. Jim Valoy, welcome to the front line with Joe and Joe, our brother. Thank you very much for uh, having me on your show. Oh, no, it's, it really, it's a, it's, it's a pleasure, Jim. And, and I think it's great that you wrote this book because I think you know, I don't care whether whether or not, you know, you're you're an atheist or you're you're a Protestant and you don't, you know, put much stock in Mother Mary. Uh, the fact is that just like the crucifixion of uh, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there's evidence for Our Lady's apparitions. We have evidence, physical yes, evidence, especially when you're talking about about Fatima. And I'm sure we're going to get into that where yes. those things, whether you're Protestant or atheist or Jew or Muslim, you can't explain those things. We can because right. we're Catholic, because we yes. know that that's a real apparition of Our Lady. So this is an exciting conversation for Joe and I. Of course, we're going to be edified as our audience will be edified with that. Jim, I'm going to hand it over to Joe and we'll have a great conversation. Jim. Uh, we begin all our shows with a prayer to Our Lady in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, never was it known that anyone who sought your help or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto you, a virgin of virgins, our mother. To you we come, for you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. Mother, the word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your clemency hear and answer us. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, one thing about uh, this show, obviously, the show is an EW10 affiliate. It's basically broadcast out of the Archdiocese of Bridgeport. Joe and I are sons of the church. Why do I say that? Because Our Lady's prophecies, there have been many. Many of them have been validated by Rome. This is very important. So I want to stress that. I think that's a good beginning you know, discussion. 
Um, we could use an example. Medjugorje is not. A lot of fruit has come out of Medjugorje, but it has not been approved yet. So we're going to discuss things that are approved because why? Yes. The church has authority and the three of us don't. So I, I think that's very important to, to like lay the groundwork. This is not us just pontificating. This is the church speaking on apparitions of Our Lady. The church is speaking and we're just talking about that. So with that, talk about the process, because I think that's a good way to kind of, you know, introduce the subject. Some people may not understand what I just discussed basically saying the church putting its hand saying this is okay and this has to wait this isn't okay could you give us a little background on that jim yeah that's very um uh, you you hit the crucial point there joe because when you look at apparitions or any kind of private revelation uh, the church says you we have the to determine whether we think it's something that uh, god is giving or uh not and um in some cases, um, we we could you know dismiss it because it doesn't ring true to us, or you know it may not ring true to our reason, or some other uh, part of our um, analysis of the apparition. But one of the one of the key things that that you brought out is the fact that it's been approved by a bishop, uh, Bishop Rivera. Um, uh, also, you know, he's, he has a long name because in, in Spanish, Spanish, uh, just in Spain, they, they do that. And, um, he, uh, Bishop Avalos, he could be, you know, he's also called, but Bishop Rivera in 1611 approved the apparition. So over 400 years ago, and every Bishop since that time has not, uh, contramanded or, uh, gone against that apparition, uh, but has affirmed it. And so it goes back to that time. And uh, that is a, uh, the church considers when a teacher of the church, a bishop, gives approval to something or says it is worthy of belief, that is a really big deal in the church, as opposed to just like, say, a priest or uh, a religious leader that might like a particular apparition, even in, even if it might be a, an apparition from God, um, it's very, very different when, than when a bishop approves it, like he's done with, um, for example, Cabejo um, in Africa in 1981 to 1989, uh, or he's done with uh, Akita, Japan. Um, in 1973, and then in, in, in a couple more years, uh, 75 and 76, I believe it went to, and there's been several other apparitions that have gotten distinct approval, Fatima, and this, this apparition I'm speaking of now has been approved as well. So uh, we have to take that, uh, that ecclesial approval as critically important when we're coming to wanting to know something is definitively a worthy of belief. And when, when something is, we're not really sure it might have good fruit and appear to be of God. Um, and yet it, uh, it doesn't have that ecclesial stamp yet. Jim Valoy is joining us here at the front line with Joe and Joe. And we're discussing his new book available at Sophia press. Please click the link in the description and buy the book from Sophia press, our ladies prophecies, God's messages for our time. J Jim, I always have a little bit of a, of an issue and um, I just put it out there because I want to know what you think, or you tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong, Medjugorje is a perfect example. Okay. Now I'm going to be honest. I quite frankly, I, I'm skeptical of it, but as Joe mentioned, okay, we know people who have had real conversions having gone to Medjugorje. Now, my view is this, that has not been approved by the bishop, okay? And as Joe said, um, it, it, Rome has not really definitively spoken out on it, I think, if I'm correct, one way or the other. Um, and to me, that's fine, because my attitude is this. If I believed in the apparition of Medjugorje and I went there, why should I think that the Lord won't, won't provide me something that I might need? through Our Lady, even if the apparition itself isn't necessarily isn't necessarily an authentic apparition um, uh, and a visit from Our Lady. Um, if I went there, like so many people have gone to Medjugorje, they have they have been given a, a great gift by God through Our Lady, even though the apparition itself 
might might not be valid. What are your thoughts? Am I am I off on that? No, not at all. In fact, I would say that you're right on the money because God is obviously working there. Uh, if you look at all the priests and all the confession, my my pastor in my church, he has gone there and he said that his stole was just wet with with tears. And um, so uh, God is actually tremendously at work in Medjugorje. And um, I personally, you know, well, I guess it doesn't matter what I believe, but um, when I see that kind of work, I'm attracted to it. And, and I tend to believe the messages are, are authentic, but it, um, you know, sometimes a message might not be properly pastored. Like, for example, I think this is the case of Garabendal, where the message was authentic, I believe, but I will not ever say that the church approved it until it actually improves it. Well, and, and and that's why I'm glad Joe Mitch says it all the time on the show. We're not the church. You know, we 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 listen to the church. And if the church says something is worthy of belief, um, and, and does so after investigation and some patience and prayer, okay, yes. uh, the church doesn't rush into these things. All right. No. I wish others outside the church would understand. The church is very deliberate in her process when it comes to canonizing saints when it comes to apparitions of our lady the church is the first organization to ask for evidence to seek evidence of these things okay and then make a firm declaration um so i think that's important for people to know if you're just joining us here at the front line with joe and joe we're joined by jim valoy we're talking about his new book our lady's prophecies god's message for a time so uh, joe if you don't mind i'll i'll, I'll i want to kick off a couple things so obviously jim we as roman catholics understand the, the unique bond between Jesus and his mother, which, again, I, we don't bash anybody on this show. We wish our Protestant brothers and sisters would understand. Mary is exceptional among human beings. She's not just any other human being, okay? She is the mother of God, definitively defined as that for what, how, how 17 centuries now, okay? Going back way before Martin Luther or John Calvin, okay? Um, mother Mary was declared the mother of God, the Theotokos, okay? There is a unique relationship there there is a bond that we do not have we could share in but we don't have that same bond as jesus and his mother okay now with that said jesus because obviously if our lady comes all right it's because jesus has asked her to all right yes. um our lady has sent our lady to reach out a hand to mankind to address problems at particular times and we'll get into that i'm sure as we have the conversation where we could talk about Guadalupe, we could talk about Fatima, where the timing was very deliberate. Okay. Um, what what's going on, do you think, right now, right now, Jim, with the with crisis in the world? There is a crisis. I don't care what anybody says. There's a crisis in the church right now. There's obviously major crisis in the world. You can't call boys boys and girls girls. That should tell you how bad the world is. What's going on in your view now, vis-a-vis -vis our lady? What do you think? I believe that our lady's prophecies you know, are coming to pass right in the news uh, each day. If we look at my book where I document, there are prophecies I wrote in there that after I wrote it, I look back and I say, this actually is happening and I did not anticipate this, but it fits to this prophecy. Now, many of these prophecies are very specific. So it talked about uh, a great president that would come and be a part of a, a particular nation. And that, the nation of Ecuador, where these pro the prophecies took place. And what's fascinating to me is that we're, we saw this happen 278 years after Our Lady spoke, excuse me. <clears throat> and so these prophecies are happening. And there are many prophecies that are specifically talking about a, a fake press, if you will, or a, a ungodly press prophecy or, you know, in prophecies that talk about a, a real decline in faith and morals. We're seeing that right before our eyes, um, a changing in a total corruption of customs, which I think the transgender um, agenda is trying to push that on kids and on families, because whatever the reasons are, um, they are trying to push that uh, almost 
in a way in which I never thought I'd live to see that kind, kind of thing happen. So I think we're living in the midst of these changes and we could see the documentation that was 400 years old. And I think God gave it to us to show us that I talked about these very problems 400 years ago. So you would know that not only am I in charge of allowing man to go this way when he chooses to rebel, but also that I would be there to help those that want to follow me and want to obey my word, I would be there for them and help them uh, achieve not only a victory, but achieve successes in their response to uh, the uh, onslaught of evil, if you will. No, I know. Hey, Jim Valoy, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna throw it over to um to Joe Resinello. Um, but 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 I would say this: some people would say, yeah, but 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 sin is sin has occurred all through human beings have done all sorts of terrible things. All through, I would say, I would say, yeah, sure, that goes back to the garden. Okay, but the bottom line is, if you think that the world today and the sins that people commit today are the are just run of the mill sins, like let's say for I don't mean run of the mill sins. All sins are serious. Don't get yes. me wrong. But but you know men and women have always committed adultery, let's say, um, yeah. and have sought many have sought repentance for it, or have been thieves, or have been murderers. Okay, our Lord was crucified next to two murderers, one of whom repented. Um, so sin is one thing. We're talking about not only deep sin nowadays. We're talking about absolute insanity, um, yeah. sanity to the level of the diabolical, um, yes. because the diabolical is not rational. OK, um, and and we're talking about we're talking about things that you mentioned. Transgenderism is is irrational. And the world is asking me to support that and you and Joe to support something that is absolutely irrational, contrary to the natural law, contrary to logic, con contrary to common sense and reason. So we are in a particular time. All right. And we're, and we're going to continue the conversation and talk about Our Lady. If you're just joining us, the book written by Jim Valoy, available at Sophia Press, Our Lady's Prophecies, God's Messages for Our Time. Joe Resinello. Jim, you alluded to uh, Bishop Salvador Ribia Avalos in 1611. He basically approved this one particular uh, apparition, Our Lady of Good Success. In the pure of the purification, I want to go into detail here. Hmm. Let's speak specifically to that, um, because ultimately, I do think uh, we're in need of purification. This is an example of that. Um, please give us some detail of that apparition and how it kind of all played out. Sure, um, it it takes place uh, where uh, a young a young teenager uh, by the name of uh, Mariana Torres. She embarks on a journey because she feels called by our Lord to join her aunt, who is a, a conceptionist nun, and four other nuns on a, on a voyage to the New World, which was South America at the time. And the New World was um, specifically Ecuador, and um, they were in a place called Quito, but they, they named it the Colony of St. Francis of Assisi. And this particular um, place was uh, going to have a con convent, a um, uh, cloistered convent. And Sister or Mother Mariana, who she later became, um, felt called to join in, in this event. So when she went there, she was having mystical encounters and experiences, but she started to have the prophecies in, in 1582, so quite some time ago. And she literally, when she saw our time, because the prophecies, many of them were geared for our time. And when she saw the prophecies, she literally said, or she found herself uh, going dying because uh, she could not believe uh, the shocking things that would be happening with the... Uh, like Our Lady said, there would be a an, an eruption of the passions and that there would be a total corruption of customs. And what we see is a corruption of customs happening right before our eyes with the constant attacks from um, the transgender activists. You know, not maybe the majority of the transgender people that are just trying to, to solve problems in their lives, but those that want to 
uh, of uh, basically say there are no other solutions than what X and Y and psychologists have told us. What would really help them is for them to be told that there are solutions for their problems, but they're not in gender dysphoria by accepting the condition, but accepting the fact of what God made them, male or female, and help them to cope with that and work with that. And we as a church, we love them and we care for them. And we want to help them to understand there is truth for them and there is compassion for them, but it's not in the way the world is trying to tell them. No, because, well, the world, the, the, the world tries to convince them that they, that it's just a okay to let your passions control your reason. And, and again, this is not passing judgment on anybody because we're all sinners. The difference yeah. is I don't embrace my sin. Okay. Yeah. None of us do. We take our sins to Jesus who says, if you're heavily burdened, give, come to me. I mean, I don't see any other hope for humanity. Joe says on the show all the time, Jim Valoy joining us here at the front line with Joe and Joe. Joe says, look, you want to help yourself. First thing you do, if you're not Catholic, become Catholic. And if you're Catholic, go to confession. Go get yeah. rid of your sins. There's a huge difference. That's why when people call people like us judgmental, no, I'm not. I'm in the Catholic Church because I'm probably worse than you, not because I'm better than you, okay? The fact is I go to confession. I don't embrace my sin. I don't want to, okay? Yes. And, and we're all sinners. We all commit sins, and we know we're doing it, okay? But we bring it to Jesus. The difference in the modern world is that people tell them your sin, okay? And many times these people, they're, they're preying on very wounded, very broken people, particularly when yes. you, you mentioned transgender. Joe says on the show all the time, these are broken people who are worthy of our prayers. We should be praying for them. Okay, They're being taken advantage of. What they're being told, What uh, and, and, and many other people since the sexual revolution in the 1960s, is it's A-OK -okay to let your passions control your reason. The church says no. The church says, okay, to be to be functioning as a human being to your highest level, your reason needs to control your passion. That's the inverted relationship. I, Joe, and I think that have led to this disaster of a of a culture, of a society that we live in. And if you want evidence of that, go open your shade out the window. I'd love your thoughts on that, Jim. Yeah, that's so true. You know, we we have. Um... We could have a thousand exorcisms, but one confession is worth a thousand exorcisms. So it shows you the power of confession is so powerful. It can literally change lives and will change lives and does change lives. And I encourage people to go as often as they can. If they have a particular sin they're struggling with, maybe they need to go every two weeks or even more. But the point I'm making is that... Um, it is so powerful because sacramental grace is behind that. And, you know, yes, an exorcism is powerful and God will use if it's necessary or deliverance ministry. But the point I'm making is um, that we oftentimes could, you know, we really need a good confession as opposed to these other methods and means of healing. Right. And our lady and our lady tells us she tells us in scripture, do what he tells you Well, he's telling you. I'm your savior. I'm I'm your redeemer. Come to me. I mean, what does Jesus expect? We're, we're not going to sin for the rest of our lives. He's God. He knows me. He knows us better than we do. All right. But the thing is, but we have a remedy and we and I think the most important thing, too, is we also make a firm purpose of amendment. We mean it. We, we yes. really don't want. And I agree with you. Jim, if you're struggling with a sin. Then, then keep bringing it to Jesus. Perhaps he wants you to keep going there every week if you have to, to go and get his grace and get his forgiveness. Joe, we could start a question before uh, before the break. We have a few minutes before the break. Jim, let's get into specifics again. Our Lady okay. revealed um, that a great and truly devout Catholic president would arise in Ecuador. We were talking about Ecuador uh, when they became a republic and that he would be martyred. Uh, this was fulfilled in the 19th century to the letter. Talk about that, because I think specifics are important. Well, I was originally going to write the entire book about Gabriel Garcia Moreno because um, he is that president. And um, <clears throat> one of the things that I became convinced of is, the, in my opinion, one of the reasons why Our Lady gave 
that prophecy was to show us in, in our time, if you look at his presidency and the fact that he knew he was going to be martyred, but he was willing to be a martyr for God, that his presidency reveals the importance and the reliability and the authenticity of this in these apparitions. So I think there's a, a very good reason why we see in his life. And as we, I devoted an entire chapter to all the ways in which he gave up his salary so that he could uh, give it to charity. He um, got the military in, in, in firm place where they were trained and he got rid of a lot of the corrupt leaders that were in both the military and civil government. And he did so many things. I tried to document uh, many of these things in, in that chapter. But uh, Our Lady said that his great president would come and that he would die a martyr in the very square where it's like a, a square of the city of Quito where that convent is, the Conceptionist convent. And that's where he was attacked by five men uh, who actually um, came at him with pistols and with uh, machetes. And uh, he pulled a gun to try to defend himself. And then his hand was cut off and he pulled his second gun, but and they chopped off his, his hand before he could get a shot at them. And um, he, so he was definitely, um, he was definitely um, a great president in what he did for his country. And there was a long period of mourning after he died because he, um, he transformed uh, and regenerated the entire nation of Ecuador. Uh, as you look in the history books, uh, he, he could, could you, one could say he was like the Abraham Lincoln of Ecuador. Jim Valois is joining us here at the front line with Joe and Joe. Jim, we're going to take a quick break because it is radio and we have to take a quick break. Uh, we would encourage everyone to go and click the link in the description to buy uh, Jim's Valois' new book out from Sophia Press, Our Lady's Prophecies, God Messages for Our Time. Uh, Sophia Press is, uh, you know, if you click the link in our description, then you will get a discount uh, for buying the book. I believe it's a 15% discount, which is Better than no discount at all. Uh, and you're going to get a great read. Jim, where else can our audience buy the book? Well, I, you know, that's the best place to go uh, to Sophia. But uh, also if they if they uh, get it from, it can be purchased from Amazon as well. And if they do uh, purchase it, um, you know, a lot of people are commenting how they like the book. So that always is a positive thing. I I, per, I personally, you know, there's some things that, you know, I, I'm not interested in and, you know, and uh, we talk about a little bit. OK, and I might have, let's like, say, a, a moderate, a moderate interest in there's some things that I have a tremendous interest in. And and mainly because Joe and I say, as I said, Jim, on the show all the time, our problems, if you want to keep it with America, our problems are not political. There are not even though there are political problems, that's not what's central to our problems. Our problem is spiritual as we always say, needs a good dose of Our Lady. That's why you're here. So talk about how Our Lady has been brought into human history, not just with the incarnation 2,000 years ago, but it's several times since then, uh, to, as you said, bring about a, a resurgence, a rebirth, a conversion. So that's why we're very excited that we're having this conversation, and we're going to continue on the other side of the break. Stick around. Welcome back, everyone, to the front line with Joe and Joe, Joe Pasillo and Joe Resinello. We are way in the breach with James Malloy. We're discussing his new book, Our Lady's Prophecies, God's Messages for Our Time, that's available at Sophia Press. Uh, please click the link in the description, and you will receive a discount for having done so when you buy the book. Thanks to Joe and Joe. Joe Resinello, where do you want to go? Jim, you mentioned uh, on the <laughs> other side of the break uh, – the prophecy from Japan, Akita. Talk about that. I think that's also being played out currently. Um, this was a message to a nun um, in the early 70s. She said basically there would be great conflict within the church. It was a statue, uh, am I correct, that was crying uh, of our Blessed Mother. Please please go into detail because I think it's it's extraordinary. Yes, it, it, it's very interesting too that there was a statue, a miraculous statue, 
that cried 101 times. Uh, I believe it was from 1970, um, uh, 74, 75 to 1976, about two or three years. And before that, the statue bled and sweat. So it was kind of like a punctuation mark of, it, that's you know much higher than that. Uh, you, you could say uh, God putting a notice that this message was urgent and important, and we should take heed to it. And in the message um, of Akita, she she called mankind to repentance, to change its ways of, of living. If it's living a sinful way of life, to turning and living a righteous way of life. To, if it's living a uh, in, in adultery, to reject that and to live a righteous Christian life to the best of one's ability. And that does not mean not going to confession, because confession is a part of living a life of, of following Christ. And so um, Akita was a call to repentance, as was uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, apparitions at um, over in um, France. Uh, uh, my my mind is drawing a blank right now. Um, Lords, Lords, yes, Lords. Uh, one of the messages that came there was penance, 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 three times, and it was a call for the beginning in the modern world, where people were turning to all kinds of different false philosophies, and Our Lady was calling back to repentance. And the same with Akita. Otherwise, a great chastisement would befall mankind, greater than what happened at the flood. So this chastisement would fall from heaven, would be fire falling from heaven. Now, if enough people repent and enough people turn away from it, we will not have that chastisement in the same way we would have if people just go about their everyday lives as if there is no need for repentance, uh, there absolutely is. And well, so go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I, I want to just explore something for a second on that, because I sure. think if you look at history, I, I recently read the entire book of Isaiah. And if you look at history, particularly of the Israelites in that time, um, when people turned from God, when the Israelites turned from God, the world fell apart. And it's not like, and this is what I think some of these, like people could hear, it's almost like it's it's a penalty. You'll be punished. A purification is not about a punishment. Punishment comes when you die and you go to hell. That's eternal. That's punishment. All purifications take place for a reason, to make you turn. Because ultimately there comes a time when man does not hear anymore. He's not interested in sound logic, reason, facts. I'm not interested. Yes. So God, who loves man, has to get his attention. And I think that's something I think people, because sometimes they hear this, they think it's like fire and brimstone. God's going to punish you. It's not about that. It's about getting your attention because hell is forever. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the, the name of the game. Hell is forever and it's real. And I don't think people take it serious. Talk about that because I, I think people could get like, you know, they, they hear this message. They think like God is like, you know, just being mean or like, no, he's trying to get your attention because he's concerned about you. That's a good way to put it because uh, a loving father doesn't enjoy beating his son or daughter. He enjoys them living an upright life. And if they choose to start pushing their neighbor down and, you know, causing their neighbor to have problems because of, of the damage they do to the property, for example, the, the father is going to correct that. A good father will correct that, that, that abusive behavior. And so the, the, our father is the same way. He wants to correct adultery because it is, it is against the spouse and it is against the person themselves because they are they are actually punishing, causing the punishment upon themselves by trying to live a double life. And so, uh, you know, God is all about 
having us have this relationship with love. And yes, it can sound like he's punishing when he sees behaviors that are bad and he, and he wants to stop them, but he will do everything in his power to, to get our attention. And if he can't get our attention through all of those other means, then sometimes he will have to use chastisement, unfortunately. I remember Father Rutler saying, uh, this is a few years ago, I was I caught a clip of him on, on either Father Rutler saying, um, God loves you too much not to punish you. There's what, like you said, Jim, what, I mean, if, if, my, if my son's creating havoc, okay, the, the father who doesn't love his son just says, go ahead, kid, do what you want. Exactly. The father who says, oh, we, what are you doing? That's my father would have said to me before a nice backhand, okay? Yes. Um, but, but, you know, and again, that keeps you on the straight path. My thing is this, they say, well, like some people would say, well, what does it mean you, you, uh, to, to live an upright life? Opposite of what the world is saying. How's that? Yeah. How's everything in the world that you offer that, yes, might look real good, just like a shiny new Mercedes Benz. It looks real good and it seems to be real good. And at the end of the day, um, and I and by the way, I lived that life for 20 years. So I get it. All right. Uh, back when I was younger and stupider. All right. Um, so you, you presented it. Yes. An upright life is much more desirable. OK. Than what you promise, because at the end of the day, whatever you promise. It's going to, it doesn't last. It's not eternal. Okay. I guess I'm going to segue into a question. Cardinal Lorenzi, all right, who I think is a great, great cardinal, extremely knowledgeable man. He could, he talked about the three major P's of the world, pleasure, power, possessions. Okay. And our lady warns about that. Okay. But the world doesn't take heed. And I'd love for you to break it down. Jim Valoy joining us here at the front line with Joe and Joe pleasure, power, possessions, they're, at the end of the day, they're meaningless. Talk about it. Yeah, that uh, Cardinal Lorenzo, he uh, hit the nail on the head. He he, uh, he summed up the problem in modern time, society. People are uh, seeking possessions. And so seeking to accumulate wealth uh, just for what they can possess rather than use their wealth for building the kingdom of God. Uh, for example, Our Lady specifically said in the prophecies that many wealthy people would not use their money and make a significant impact uh, uh, in the culture. This is something that can be done. Um, and, and, and a lot of wealthy people uh, need to step on board. Some have, and more need to step on board and start using their money because they can tremendously thwart the the progress of evil, uh, in the progress of even the diabolic, by utilizing their monies the way their 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 are their king, and our Lord uh, calls them to use it. So um, live uh, like the cardinal said, uh, not seeking after possessions is key in position. Also, that's another uh, element of it in power. So. The cardinal hits why some people go after uh, things for the what they can accumulate. Other people go after the position itself for the power they can wield. And the, the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, none of this will bring happiness. What brings happiness is simply obeying the Ten Commandments. That's kind of like the blueprint for living hap happily. Um, whereas... The Cardinal is saying we're getting off track here and the modern world has been calling us to get off track for a long time. But that's where we have to start saying, you know, I've been lied to for a long time and it's time that I stop listening to those lies. And that's what, and, and again, I go back to scripture. I go back to our lady at the wedding feast of Cana. It was, it's see, some things are simple. We say on the show all the time, Jim Valoy, simple, not simplistic, Simple. Do mm -hmm. what he tells you. Ultimately, under all these apparitions, under all these prophecies, she's basically saying the same thing. Do what he tells you. And what does he tell you? Love your love God, love your neighbor. Again, simple. We don't have to blow it out. No volumes have been written about the faith. Thank God, because you you know the, you, if you want to dig deeper, but sometimes it's as simple as. Love God first, love your neighbor as yourself. 
It, it really is that. And, and the thing is, if you love God, now this is my two cents on Cardinal Lorenzo, I hope you don't mind, Jim Valoy. If no. you love God, all right, you don't seek pleasure, you seek joy, because joy is in the heart, okay? Yes. You don't seek power for power's sake over other people. You want power over your own, you have, have control over your own self. All right, yeah. to have self-control. That's real power, to be able to put your hand up to sin and those who would promote it and say, uh, I don't want that. Thank you very much. See you later. And possessions, understanding that, okay, owning something is not a bad thing, but understanding that eventually either that thing is going to break down and it's going to go away, or you're going to die and whatever you owned doesn't matter anymore. That's my two cents. And one other thing before I hand it over to Joe, I think a great example of what you talked about, about wealthy Catholics, contributing and using their wealth to build up the kingdom of God is Tom Monahan, the founder of Domino's Pizza, who sold Domino's. I think it was Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, for about a billion dollars, okay? He gave half he of found, it away. He gave half of it away and founded Ave Maria University, which is which is even beyond Newman List Catholic University. The whole, a whole town in Florida based around Ave Maria University because Tom Monahan used his wealth significant wealth by the way um yes. to build up the kingdom of god and to educate young people in the faith um and form them properly so i just wanted to give a quick shout out to uh to tom monahan um yeah, but anyway go ahead that's jim awesome. please you yeah i was just gonna interject that i uh reference in my book those catholics that are stepping up to the plate in and, and in my mind i was thinking of tom monahan because he uh, built a number of buildings for example at franciscan um, university and he uh, played a significant role there before he went to Ave Maria and built yeah. uh, built the uh, university there and he's also helped orphanages and he's been a uh, a wealthy Catholic that has used his money to advance the kingdom of God and I think we have many many more wealthy Catholic uh, leaders that for some reason in our time, they're holding on to money as if they could uh, once they're passed uh, passed into the next life. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, you know, no, we're not judging them, but, you know, perhaps they should take a page out of Tom Monahan's playbook. You know, Jesus, I'm going to throw it over to Joe because we want to get back to Our Lady. Jesus said to the rich man or, you know, commented, he says, you know, OK, you have this money. We'll give it away and, and follow me. See, my view is that always gets a little perverted. Tom Monahan is an example of someone who has tremendous wealth. We're not talking about making a million dollars. We're talking about making a billion dollars, okay? And understands, I think, what's central in that lesson that Jesus was trying to give to the rich man is that he, he basically was saying to the rich man, your, your possessions own you. Tom Monahan is an example of someone who owns his possessions and knows that ultimately those possessions belong to God and they're to be used for God's purposes um and i think that's the pr i've always thought that that's the proper catholic way to look at wealth if your wealth owns you you have a problem but let's get back to our lady um and if you're just joining us here at the front line with joe and joe james valoy is joining us his book is available at sophia press you could click the link in the description our lady's prophecies god's messages for our time jim by the way i just want to throw out this has been a phenomenal conversation i wish we could talk to you for five hours uh but we have about we have about another 14 15 minutes joe Rasanello. thank you Jim, basically what we're talking about here is conflict there's a conflict between good yes. and evil basically yes. different examples of that and i i want to take it to the book of revelation saint john who was probably and not probably definitely the most mystical of the gospel writers and he talks yeah. about how our lady would crush the head of the serpent now why would he say that because she was pure. You see, the devil is afraid of the Blessed Mother because she's perfect. See, I'm not. He's not afraid of me. He's afraid of her because she's perfect. And that's why we have to go to her because she will crush the head of the serpent. I can't. Why do I bring me into this? Because I've tried. And I've gotten frustrated. We talked a little bit about that before we got on the show. I've tried hard. Because that's what men do. We think we can do things. We yeah. will accomplish it. Wrong. Wrong. We are fighting against principalities and pure evil, which is in the world. We are an ant next to an elephant. But not when it comes to Our Lady. Now, why do I bring this up? I appeal to her 
through my prayer and through fasting because she can crush the head of the serpent and I can't. Let me give you a concrete example. Pilate's wife in a dream was told to tell her husband, don't do this to this man. He's innocent. And she told him he didn't listen to her. Our lady can do that to people through our inter our prayers, our fasting, our appeal. Because there comes a point, and I've learned this in my life, you could say things to your blue in the face. You could talk to people. You could appeal to people. You could plead with people. They're not having it. But God knows how to talk to people in a way that gets their attention that no one else can. And that's why I turn to Our Lady. She'll whisper in the ear of somebody if we appeal to her because she will crush the head of the serpent, not me. Talk about that. That's the weapon. You see, people disregard that because they think too much of themselves. I used to. They go, oh, no, I'll do it. Wrong, Joe. Wrong. You will do nothing. That That's a very, what you are both saying, uh, uh, both you, uh, Joe and Joe, um, the uh, truth that you're bringing out here is is so incredible because if we could understand that um, if we're going to make an impact in this world, it's going to have to be joining her program and not advancing our own program. And, you know, so her program is the salvation of souls. She wants to help her son. And you're wanting to do the same. Both of you want to do the same thing and myself as well. So in order to help people, we've got to get the messages out that we're supposed to get out. And so this message in my book, um, Our Lady's Prophecies, is geared to bringing out the prophecies. I actually put the prophecies right in the book and let the reader see them so that they could perhaps see something in there that I did not see. And at this end, because I do not claim to understand every single prophecy that Our Lady gives us, but you're right. It's we we cannot fight this dragon. One of my friends um, used the analogy of fighting a dragon with a pea shooter. You you just can't do it. Uh, we we can't fight the dragon of the evil one with with uh with a uh, with the wrong kind of weapons. We have to come at him with the weapons of the rosary and adoration, um, the Eucharist and the and the rosary. And so we don't come directly, we go directly to Our Lady. So Our Lady will help us and she does help us in every way possible, but we do have to go to her in order to- Well, I, I think that we have, an, especially in American history, in 20th century American history, I think we have an example of that. When you look at, when you look at, let's say, when America had a shot of being a great country, um, back in, let's say, the the uh, early to middle part of the 20th century, uh, Catholics were very vocal about praying the rosary publicly, um, getting out there, rosary rallies. Joe was a father, Peyton. Um, uh, Patrick Peyton. Patrick Payne, uh, promoting the rosary. Uh, you had the Holy Name Society. When you appeal to God, see, I think I think you mentioned something, Jim, and l let's let's stay on it for a second, okay? You sure. mentioned that we're choosing the wrong weapons. What Joe and I say on the show all the time is, "Here's my weapon. I have it right on my computer screen here, okay? This is this is my weapon, okay? mm -hmm. um, and this weapon is what informs any other weapon that I pick up. Now, where am I going with this? Okay, my primary weapon." is my howitzer, which is, which is the rosary. Okay. Yes. Because, because I want to appeal to Jesus Christ, through the, as Joe said, through the powerful intercession of our lady, because, because, because the devil actually fears her as a human being, mm -hmm. right? human being actually fears her because she did yes. something that none of us did. And none of us may not have done, which was to say yes to God. Okay. Yes. And that's a whole other conversation. We can have the power of that. Yes. All right. The problem, let's keep it with America, is you're picking up the wrong weapons. You're, mm -hmm. look, you're looking to the Supreme Court. You're looking to political parties. You're looking to political movements. You're looking to political figures. Okay, you're look, You want laws, let, let's say, um, to, to be enacted that are going to supposedly help you in the political arena. Your problem is you're picking up the wrong weapons. If you want those things to be effective, useful, okay, in restoring some sort of semblance of sanity in America, 
your primary weapon needs you need to pick up is the rosary. Go yeah. to Jesus through Our Lady. If we did that as really now, Catholics are doing it. Many Catholics in American under, in America understand that and are doing it. That's why I think we're not doomed just yet. Okay, um, yeah. because there's still good people out there. But if we had more that were doing that, okay, then guess what? Some of this BS that's being rammed in our throats that Our Lady prophesied about going back centuries, okay, uh, we might ha we might stand a chance against it. My rant, Jim. I love your thoughts. I think you're right on the money uh, because we're not going to defeat this thing or the 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 forces of the diabolic by um, appealing to human agencies. Um, I think we do need to have more rosary rallies everywhere. And when when they uh, let's say a group of uh, uh, trans uh, transgender uh, activists comes to a stadium, I think we need to have. 30 bishops out there, or maybe even um, 150, to stand up and say, we're not going to let you mock our Lord in our in his gospel, in our lady, and religious life any longer. We're going to stand up lovingly, and we're going to tell you that we love you, but we don't want you to stay in that pathway because it's going to lead to sorrow and in unhappiness and let's be honest it could lead to hell too well the thing is um and i'm throwing it over to joe we probably have time well we have a little bit of time left um is those people let's say you brought it up okay let's say that they call themselves the sisters of perpetual indulgence they're probably broken wounded people they're playing a role they happy at the moment it's and those people obviously we pray for it. it's the people that sent them there it's mm. the people that promote them OK, yes. here's there's what 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 Paul was Paul was talking about in Ephesians six about about the principalities and powers of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places. OK, that, it's it's those people that promote and support these broken, wounded people who lie to them. OK, mm -hmm. um, you know, Dante might have had to create a 10th circle. OK for where those people are going because to me we'll pray for them to me i don't think there's any hope for them i think they're beyond repentance i think they've totally bought in it's the people that they use all right all the broken wounded people those are people that joe and i and i know you are jim and i know our lady is uh trying to get to to say you're on the wrong path you need to turn around. I don't want to. We I want to hand it over to Joe Jim for one more question. If you're just joining us, James Valois here. We're talking about his new book, Our Lady's Prophecies: God's Messages for Our Time. Please buy it from Sophia Press. The link is in the description, and you'll get a discount. Joe, quick question. Uh, we have time for one more quick question. Our Lady obviously loves us like a mother, and all mothers have mercy for their children. But I think, and I read something recently, and it put things into context. Christ is merciful. I think sometimes we kind of don't think about that for a moment. He's infinitely merciful. And another prophecy comes from St. Faustina. I, I recommend that read, the diary. I think one day she'll be declared a doctor of the church. I'm not speaking for the church. That's my opinion. That's just my opinion. Um, but sh that book is a huge, huge message. And it's a message of mercy. I believe that God sent that message into the 20th century for us, the message of mercy mm -hmm. before the end. Because God, just like any father, does, doesn't want his kid to get lost. Talk about that message of mercy. Because Christ loves us and mercy is a part of that love. It's not punishment, it's mercy. And we have about two minutes just to give you a heads up. Okay, sounds good. Um, you know, one thing I would say is like in our, uh, our Lady of Good Success of the Purification, uh, Our Lady says when things look totally dark uh, or like there's no hope left, that's when the hour of Our Lady will, will come. And she will step in and she will play a crucial difference because that's the way our Lord set it up. But the mercy of our Lord and the mercy of Our Lady, they they are definitely there for every one of us. And I think that uh, what I would say is that we should ponder that every every day. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, it's one of those messages where 
Uh, I tried to focus on that to some extent in the last chapter. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, to, me, to me, I think it's important that you go out and buy Jim's book, number one, okay, and, and understand these these visits, these apparitions, these messages um, right. from Our Lady. I'm glad Joe brought up mercy because it's important to understand mercy. I think mercy is, is, is another term that the devil has perverted into something that it is not okay look at what look at what uh, our lord says to saint faustinus that i never reject a contrite heart a contrite heart we talked about confession earlier you go to confession because you're sorry for your sin you pray an act of contrition because you're sorry for your sin you're contrite jesus won't turn you away he told peter our heavenly father will forgive you 70 to 7 70 times seven times a day okay so what are you talking about it, joe said the Lord is infinitely merciful. I do want to throw in a comment, Jim. I think you'll find funny. You probably know this. It might even be in the book with Our Lady of Guadalupe. All right. Um, so you got the Tilma. And uh, we've, we've mentioned this to people who don't know the story that uh, Hillary Clinton went down there at one point, probably to pander for whatever reason is. And she's walking through the shrine with with the priest. And she looks at the, at the Tilma. And she says, oh, it's so, so beautiful. Who's the artist? And the, the priest said, uh, God. <laughs> that's good god, god god's the artist and uh and we'll have you back to talk about our lady guadalupe because to me if you look at our i mean i know i want we want people to buy your book because you're going to talk about a number of prophecies okay to me if you look at all the details if you're bothered if joe as joe says on the show if you're a sincere seeker of the truth okay and you bother and you look at all the details of guadalupe and fatima all right just the science just the science okay You'd come away saying, all right, something happened there. Don't quite know what. Maybe I want to research it a little bit more, but something happened there. The first step to doing that would be go out and buy James Valois' book. The book, once again, is available at Sophia Press. The link is in the description. Our Lady's Prophecies, God's Messages for Our Time. If you have to, you can buy it from Big Box. You can buy it from Amazon. Uh, what we prefer you refer for you to support our Catholic publishers. James Malloy, this has been a fantastic conversation. Needless to say, you are welcome back at the front line with Joe and Joe anytime, our brother. Well, we really, uh, I, I want to thank you both. Uh, it's been a delightful interview. Excellent. Thanks again, James. And thank you all out there for joining us at the Veritas Catholic Radio Network, 1350 on your AM dial, 103.9 on your FM dial, spreading the truth of the Catholic faith to the New York City metropolitan area. Download the app, share it with your friends. You'll have access to all of our station's content. And if you like what Joe and I do, uh, X, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Rumble, please like, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff. We go live Thursday, every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time, where we're getting to even more trouble than we do here. So you'll really enjoy that. And remember, until the next time, that our conversation is your conversation, and that conversation is going on everywhere. We'll talk to you soon.